this video we're going to be going over some of the other cool ES6 features that maybe we've talked about here and there, maybe not. Um, we might see some new things here, but overall we'll just kind of expand our knowledge of some of these nice ES6 features. So the first one I want to touch on is the spread syntax, which we have actually seen before. So the spread syntax can basically be used to take multiple arguments and condense them into an array, for example. Uh, so let me add that in comments. Slash can be used in places where functions, and I'll add an eg, eg functions, expect multiple arguments. So as a reminder of that, um, let's do a quick one here. Function, we'll call it spread function. And if you do something like dot, 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 and then you can give, you know, multiple args. And basically, no matter how many arguments you give it, because we're using the spread operator here, it's basically going to condense them down into one array. So as an example, we'll just console log out whatever we give this. Console.log multiple args. Notice I'm dropping off the spread syntax from the front because we only really need this in the um, parameters of the function. And then here, if I invoke the function, spread function, I will give it a number, we'll give it another number, we'll give it a Boolean, we'll give it a string, we'll give it another string. Right, we could use as many arguments as we need here, and we don't need to make sure that we have a certain set in our function arguments because we have this spread operator. Right, as you see here, it can kind of condensed it down into an array. And this can actually be used not just for arguments, but also for multiple elements, or even multiple variables. So we've seen this a couple times, right, in our um, function parameters. But what if we wanted to do something else with the spread syntax? What would that look like? Well, let's say we have an array. So const my array. And we have a couple numbers, one, two, three, four. So this is an iterable, which means we can use the spread syntax with it. So what could we do with this? Well, let's try to console log dot 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 my array. It's not really, really going to look any different. It just logs out each element in the array. But it works a little different than you might expect, right? Because we use the dot 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 here. So we're kind of iterating over it. If I remove that, it just displays them in an array. So that kind of gives us a hint as to what we can do with this. So, you know what, let's say we have this array and we want to take this first array and we have another array, const my second array. And this one has other numbers, five, six, seven, eight, nine, for example. Let's say we want to take the first array and somehow put it into the second array. Of course, we could do something like this, my second array dot push my array. This will definitely work at this point if we console log my second array. Let's take a quick peek at it. Right, so it added it, but it concatenated the array into the array. Right, so not quite the behavior we expected, right? Or maybe you did. If you did, that's awesome. Um, but in any case, this is a little weird, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six elements in the array, and one of them, one of the elements is actually an array instead of a number, like the rest of our array. Well, recall when I console logged dot 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 my array. That's kind of our hint as to how we can use the spread syntax in that regard. So let's say instead of doing it that way, we do something like this, const my third array. Okay, we're going to create an array. And we're going to do dot 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 my array. Okay, and then let's also do dot 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 my second array. Let's see what happens if we console log that, my third array. Clear that, run it. Well, isn't that interesting? So I like to th kind of think of this as, you know, we're sort of making a copy or cloning the original array, but hey, this is working pretty nicely, right? We could have also just done something with the numbers, five, six, whoops, I wanted to do comments, uh, commas, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? We could definitely do that that work in pretty much the same way, right? We're just kind of iterating using this spread syntax and taking each of these items and placing them into this third array. 
So very easy to use with array literals like this. Now what if you did want to use push though? Well, let's see how we can do that. So let's move down a little bit. I'll move this over, make some space. Now there is a way that you can use an array as if it weren't an array. And what I mean by that is we can do something like this. So function, say hello, for example. I know not the most um, descriptive name, but it takes three arguments and it's just going to say console.log use backticks hello x y z just doing some simple interpolation now let's say we have an array and we want to use the array in this function well our function is not expecting an array it's expecting three separate arguments essentially but just for the sake of of this example let's try that out so we say const um, hello array equals and our array literal will just be hello Bob we'll just do some names here Bob Jane and Peter now of course if we try to invoke say hello and pass it the array hello array well let's see what happens clear run undefined undefined right so it just took the array the first one the first part and treated that as X which it's not really what we want, right? We don't, we don't really want undefined, comma, undefined, and we don't want these to be kind of concatenated into one variable or one argument, essentially. So how can we get around that? Well, the old timey way we might do this is to do something called apply. So this is a function prototype uh, method, which you can basically use to take an array and turn it into separate arguments. Um, so this is the way it used to be written. So um, this is not the way we're going to be writing it from now on, but just to show you what we're, we're going to be doing. Essentially, you would do something like, okay, so we have your function that takes three arguments. We have our array with three elements in it. So we're going to invoke the function, say hello, and we're going to call dot apply. And for the first argument, we'll give it null. And the second argument, we give it whatever we want it to transform from an array into you know separate arguments. Let's try this now after calling dot apply. Okay, there it behaved as expected. Right? And by the way, this null here, this would apply to the this property, but we're just assigning it as null. Um, in any case, this is how we can kind of take that array, turn it into separate arguments. So, you know, I'm going to add a comment here. So alternative to function dot prototype dot apply. Okay, so let's see if we can't figure out to, how to do this using the spread syntax. And you can probably figure out how this is going to look. But just in case, I'm going to comment that out. And we'll do spread syntax way, like so. And now we can just do say hello, dot, 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 hello array. All right, so if this is what you guessed, you are right on the money. All right, so let's try it out. Clear, run. Boom, works exactly as intended. And to me, this is a lot clearer than seeing that, you know, dot apply, because I would, my first response might be like, well, what is that doing? What is that, why is that apply there when it might not necessarily need to be? That's cool. What if we did want to be able to push one array into another array? How would we do that? Um, as you know, if we did something like const r1 equals uh, 10, 20, 30, const r2 equals 40, 50, 60. If at this point we do r1.push r2, and then we console log what r1 looks like, well, as you might expect, it just pushes the entire array into the array instead of each element in the array. So, I mean, we could do a for of loop and loop over this, or we could use apply like we did up here. So, in case you're curious what apply would look like, it would look like this r1.push.apply r1, r2. Okay, so a little weird, right? But this should work. Let's console log this. And just for sanity's sake, let's do a slight change here just to make sure that it is still working. Okay, clear, run. There we go. All right, so a bit faster than actually just looping over every one of these elements. But if we wanted to do something even more elegant, we could do an alternative. So 
let's comment this out because I want to use these const names. And we can say const r1 equals, let's go with 60, 70, 80. Const r2 equals 90, 100, 110. And we want to somehow push array 2 into array 1. Very simple, r1.push dot 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 r2. But at this point, if we console log r1, we'll be able to see that it successfully did it. There we go. So pretty straightforward, I feel. Now, what if you wanted to concatenate a bunch of arrays together? Um, that would be pretty straightforward. Even pre-ES6 is pretty straightforward. ES6 just brings a little bit more um, niceness to it. So you can use the concat operator, concat like this. It's a built-in function you can call on arrays to, as the name implies, concatenate them together. So for example, let's say we have const. Instead of r1 and 2, I'll say my r equals, this one can contain jelly beans, the const my r uh, 2, and this one can have donuts, chocolate, and const my r 3, this one can have pie, lemonade, for example, and you know what, I want all these things together, I want to concatenate them all. So instead of saying my r dot push dot 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 my r2, and then again, my r dot push dot 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 my r3. Instead, you can use the concat um, operators. You can say my r dot concat. Now you can pass it as many arrays as you need. So my r2, my r3. At this point, if we console log my r, it should be transformed. Run it. Okay, not quite. And ah uh, yes, because my uh, because concat is non-destructive, so instead let's assign this to a variable. So what this is doing, it's creating a new array. So we'll do const new my r equals my r dot concat. Then let's check out what that is. New my r. Boom, there we go. We concatenated all these arrays together and made a new array by using concat. And we could have done this the exact same way using the spread syntax instead. So instead of concat, you know, I'm going to comment that out and I'll directly below it, I'll do the uh, ES6 way. So new my r equals, let's make a new array where we will grab all of the previous arrays we need. My r dot dot dot, my r2 dot dot dot, my r3. Okay, and you know what, then we'll console log that out as well. And just as a sanity check, we'll add something new here. Um, let's see, what's good to add? Cake, can't go wrong with cake. Okay, clear, run, success. There's slightly more complex examples. So right now, instead of just adding everything in order, um, let's say we have a couple arrays and we want to insert parts from one array, maybe into the middle of another array. So how would we do that? We'll look at the old way first, as usual. So we'll say const. Um, let's say it's a list of car parts, for example. And, I don't know, just off the top of my head, we'll have a gasket, uh, tires, uh, radiator, and, I don't know, muffler. Okay, so those are our car parts, and we want to insert some other car parts somewhere in between, say, the radiator and the muffler. Right, so for some reason, the order is important for us based on the index, and let's say, const list of parts to insert. We can say wipers and what else? Um, headlights. Okay, so we want to insert these between tire and radiator. Um, there's a couple ways that we could achieve that. We could slice up the original array by calling dot slice, so array.prototype slice, or we could splice, which would destroy the original array. Um, Let's let's write a function to take care of this for us. So we'll say function list inserter, and it's going to take three arguments: um, array one, array two, and whatever index we want to insert at. Uh, so what our logic is going to look like is well, let's do something like this. So we'll say const uh, first part of array equals r one dot slice. And then where do we start slicing? We start at index zero. We stop slicing at whatever index was passed in. Okay. 
then we can const second part of array equals again r one dot slice Okay, so we're kind of splitting it up into two separate arrays, and these are creating new arrays for us when we do slice. Um, then what we will do is we will say first part of array dot concat, and we're going to concatenate in array two at that point, and also second part of array after that. Okay, so let's assign this to a new const um, assembled assembled car. Not really assembled, but I think you get what I mean. Um, and then let's just console log that out. Assembled car. At this point you could return it from the function, of course. So let's try it out. List inserter. We'll give it list of car parts. List of parts to insert. And where do we want to insert it? Well, we want to insert it between the radiator and the muffler. So 0, 1. So we'll give it index 1 here and see what happens. All right, so let's save that, run our console, and is it in the order we want it? So we have gasket, yep, wipers. Okay, so we inserted too early. Let's switch this to 2. Okay, there we go. Gasket, tires, wipers, headlights, radiator, muffler. So we successfully inserted where we wanted, and we kept the order we needed, um, but kind of a pain to do it this way. Of course, we could have done it a different way. This is just one implementation. Uh, but how would we rewrite this using the spread syntax instead? Well, pretty simple, actually. Now, we still need to kind of slice our arrays out because you know it could be anywhere we need to insert. If I change the index here, we could insert it anywhere. Um, but basically, let me just erase this line of code. And we're going to say, put it in array, dot, 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 first part of array. Then we grab our array2 that was passed in, not forgetting our dot dot dot, and dot 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 second part of array. Okay, let's see if that worked. And just to check, we'll change the position here. We want to insert these right after the gasket. Okay, clear, run, and success. Of course, we, we could have written this a different way if we were just composing our array literals and for some reason we decided to do it like so, this would definitely have the same effect. So dot 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 list of parts to insert. So instead of putting it into a function, we could do it this way. This would of course insert whatever elements we have in this array into this particular position. Um, but we outsourced it to an array, or to a function rather, and that's totally fine. Um, now, a note on slice versus splice, which I did mention earlier, um, the difference is that splice will kind of destroy the original array. So if I comment out invoking that function, just to demonstrate, we could do list of car parts dot splice and starting at index zero, ending at index one. So if we splice out some parts and then we console log it, list of car parts parts. Let's see what it looks like. Right, so we've spliced out parts of this list of car parts. Right, so we grab this item out. If we spliced from 0 to 2, well that changes it even more. Right, so slice is non-destructive. It leaves the original array alone, whereas splice, even if I did splice in here, it would have destroyed the original array. Um, which normally you don't really want to destroy your original um, data source. You just kind of want to alter it and return some new version. Of course, it depends on your use case, but I just wanted to mention that um, in case you're wondering what the difference is between splice and slice. On that same topic, um, you can basically use this uh, spread syntax to copy an array. Uh, so for example, if we have const another r equals and you can have something in here, just some random numbers that don't really mean anything. Um, if you want to keep this alone and just kind of clone it, well, that's very simple. We'll do yet another r equals dot 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 another r. Right, so this is basically creating a copy. And if we verify that, console log yet another r. Right, so it just made a copy. Notice that I put it in 
a um, an array literal. And this is basically the same as doing something like this, another r dot slice. Right, pretty much the same thing here. And I took off a nine so we can compare. See, it does the same thing. But personally, I don't find the slice too indicative of what it's actually doing. Um, it's slicing and making a copy. If you don't give it any parameters, it just copies the whole thing. Whereas personally, I find this a bit more descriptive in terms of what it's doing, just personally though. And now because we created a copy, we can push into this other array. So yet another, another r.push, push in some crazy number. And if we console log another r comma yet another r, we will see that they are two distinctly different things. All right, so here's the original, here's the copy. So that's the spread syntax. One differenti differentiation I did want to make is the rest syntax, so rest operator. So rest um, actually looks the same, so it's three dots. And rest, you can think of it in terms of a function's arguments. So if I scroll up here, um, this is an example of us using the rest operator. And you can see how it's very similar to spread. In fact, it's exactly the same as spread. Um, but it kind of does the opposite thing. So whereas spread, you know, if we use it in terms of an array, kind of spreads out the array and sort of iterates over every element in the array, rest will kind of take all the arguments and squish them together into one array. So for example, function has many args, and we use it in the argument here of a function. So dot, 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 all args, for example, all arguments. Right, this will take whatever we pass it, no matter how many they are, and just kind of squish them into an array. And then we can do some kind of transformative action. So if we wanted to do like a for loop, for example, const prop of all args, console log prop plus 10. Right, then we can invoke the function has many args. And we're not going to pass it an array here. We're just going to pass it a bunch of numbers, for example. Let's see what happens. Clear run. All right, so there it just kind of collects the args into an array. So slightly different behavior, but the syntax is the same, which is, is a little bit confusing, I will admit. But you know, it's kind of in the name. So when you have a rest operator, it's basically taking all the arguments and the reason it might be called rest is because you know you might have x, y, comma, and then rest of args, for example. You say rest of of args that should be capitalized like so. Right, this way if you give it say the first two arguments would be strings, hi, hello. Right, so this is x, this is y, and then the rest of the args are here follow, following the three dots. Right, so here we're just taking the rest of args and we're not doing the action on x or y. x, y. There we go. So you know, if you need to spread over the elements in an array, use the spread operator. If you need to grab the rest of the arguments in a function, you use the rest operator. All right, so let me comment some of this stuff out so it stops logging to the console. Okay, let me just test it out. Try that again. Okay, next topic. Um, we're gonna talk about method definitions. So just to contrast with ES5 and previous, so pre-ES6, in object literals, uh, methods are defined as function expressions. So as an example, if you're instantiating an object and you want to have methods on that object, so say for example, const my obj equals, and you could have something like um, id 10, and then you have some kind of uh, method here. Right, recall that functions inside of objects are called methods. So you would say something like, say hi, colon is a function like so, console log hi. Right, so we're basically creating this as a key. The value will be whatever this 
function evaluates to. It's a function expression. So if I were to say my obj.say hi and invoke that method, and let me actually save this and try that again. There we go. Right, so that works. So let me add an eg here. But ES6 has method definitions instead for creating methods. And slight difference, but basically if we rewrite this using some ES6 code, we can say const my ES6 obj, kind of a weird name, but it'll do. And this one as well could have an ID of 11. And if we just want to write a method, we can skip this whole function expression and we can just define a method like so. Say hi. Console log ES6 is cool. Maybe we can have another one. Say bye. By now. Alright, so we can skip this function expression. Um, and now if we test it out, my ES6 obj dot say hi. Clear, run. All right, totally works. And it's just a convenient shorthand. And I think it's it's a bit more clear in terms of you know the intentions. Um, of course it's optional to use this, you can do it or not. But I kind of like this way. It's kind of uh, kind of makes sense to me. Let's try out say bye. Bye now. And in terms of taking in arguments, well, if we want to combine, you know, our rest, our rest syntax from up here, uh, let's try it out. Const another obj equals greet, and this one can console the log. Hey, if this one takes some kind of parameter, um, org1, this one can say, I'm just going to call it another method, and take in, let's see, dot 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 args, and let's invoke greet, this dot greet, right, you can definitely do this, and this referring to this object, of course, so it's going to take in an argument. So we'll say args, the first argument. Then we can say console.log. Um, let's see. I have, and you know what, we'll do some interpolation. I have args.length arguments. All right, let's try it out. Another obj dot another method. And before I forget, we are taking in an argument in our greet, so we'll interpolate here as well. Because why not go wild with our interpolating? Hey, arg1. Okay, so arg1 can be, uh, let's see, Tim. One, false, true. One, two, three, in an array for some reason, and 61. Let's try it out. Boom. Hey, Tim. Right, so we invoked a method from within another method. Works as expected. I have six arguments. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, totally worked. Okay, so minor difference here, but um, just kind of another nice thing that ES6 uh, brings to the table.